Thanks for joining us for Beyond the Minute, where we take a deep dive into the weekly real estate numbers so you can better understand the current market and we can provide you the knowledge and insight you need to have the confidence to dominate this market and your next real estate transaction. Welcome to the Monday Morning Market Minute. Single family inventory from South San Francisco to Redwood City right now, 211. That's up from 196 of last week. We had 45 homes come on the market. Last week we had 45 homes come on the market and we had 30 homes going on contract. That's better than last week's 25, but not quite the 40 that we like to see week in and week out. Condominiums right now, we have 90 condominiums on the market. That's up slightly from 85 of last week. We had 20 condominiums come on the market and 13 condominiums go into contract. Not as good as last week's 18. So total, total from South San Francisco to Redwood City, single family homes and condominiums inventory is 301. <laughs> And now, your hosts, with over 60 years of local Bay Area experience and hundreds of millions of dollars of closed real estate transactions, Timothy and Dan Gilmartin. Hello, this is Dan Gilmartin, and I'm not sitting down with the president of the Gilmartin Group, my brother, Timothy D. Gilmartin. And I do want to welcome you to episode 27 of Beyond the Minute, where Tim and myself usually dive deep together and unpack the Monday Morning Market Minute. Well, we missed last week's show because I came down with a bad cold and I sounded terrible, which would not have bode well for the podcast. And this week, we're, we're without Tim because he's on a well-deserved vacation. So I'm going to do this on my own and combine the last two weeks into episode 27 and probably um, this show is probably going to be a little bit shorter than normal because I don't have Tim and his thoughts and, and um, you know what you know his his contribution. So it is July 25th, and since episode 26, inventory has gone from 259 to slightly over 300. But the peak, if you might recall, for 2019 is 313. And it is to be expected to have inventory go up at this time of the year. But what I think is the big news is we're still under the 2019 peak, which means the market is being very efficient for this time of year. We did have 55 single family homes go into contract, which is under what we would like to see for a two week period, which shows there has been a little slowdown in sales. But again, for July, that, that is to be expected. Uh, also, that being said, last year at this time, we had 85 homes go into contract and inventory was at 219, but then started to slow down in the following weeks as we went into August. Now, we did have 75 single family homes close escrow, which is a healthy number. And the average days on market for those 75 closings was only 17. So that's that's very good. And not agents don't always put it in the computer um, exactly on the day it closes. Sometimes they, they you know miss a day. So it could even be a little sooner. You know, Really, we're talking two weeks, which is a very, very healthy number. And the average list price to sales price ratio was 102% for those 75 closings, which is right where, we, where we've been hovering around for all of uh, the month of July, pretty much. So I'm gonna jump into tales from the street. So. Uh, some homes are selling right away is what we're noticing and other homes are just not getting the same activity which I'm noticing is causing people to think that the market is shifting but when you look at the big picture of inventory it's still relatively low meaning we've seen markets with inventory more than double from where we are now so I think we're experiencing a normal July and really we're experiencing a more normal market which is great for buyers because then it allows them to get a little bit of breathing room uh, and with more inventory for them to look at, you know, they just get maybe a little bit more breathing room and to make a decision and, and to write an offer and maybe not miss out on something. You know, we certainly are having buyers who have missed out on things because, you, you know, it's moving so fast. You can't you can't not look or, you know, not not get in the game. Uh, let's jump into that. So for what? We got a home in San Mateo over in Shoreview, actually on Shoreview Avenue. The address, 2159 Shoreview Avenue. It was a three bedroom, two bath home, 1,080 square feet on a 5,500 square foot lot. 
and uh, it was listed for one million ninety eight thousand on June seventh, and sold in eleven days for one million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, bringing it to a one thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars a square foot. Now that is just fantastic news. A nice home in Shoreview. But you know Shoreview Avenue, as we you might know, is a busy street. So you know a nice home on a busy street, uh, you know selling way over asking in 11 days, uh, getting that type of price is very very good news for uh, sellers and and just really under, you know pointing out that the market is still relatively very healthy as I've been saying. Now the open houses for the last couple of weekends, you know for July actually the foot traffic was very healthy. Um, you know, for our open houses, people we had we had people at our open houses. It was you know wasn't wasn't dead by by any means. So we've got people out there, uh, cert- certainly looking at homes. And um, you know, when I look at the interest rates, they're still very low. And in terms of the economy, it is earnings season this week, and it's been relatively positive. So that uh, shows that the economy is still feeling. To me, at least, in watching that portion, very healthy, which is obviously boasting well for the real estate market. Now, as we've stated, July tends to be a sluggish month, and with inventory in its typical high side, means an opportunity for buyers to find a great home right now and lock in a great interest rate. Now, for sellers, as the example for Shoreview, uh, you know, you might be thinking, well, should I wait? Um, it's possible you could you know wait. That could be definitely a, a plan. But uh, we have data that shows that if you put the right price on the home, and you prepare the home properly, you are going to get multiple offers. So that's good. Um, you know other now other questions that I've been getting. One in particular uh, that I've gotten a few times is, hey, what's going on with the high end market? And I got I do have to say that uh, the high end market is definitely on vacation. There, there, I can definitely feel uh, a slowdown there. Now, people who are buying that, you know, around here, the, you know, this whole market is high end. But uh, for the high, let's call it the higher end, people who are, uh, have the ability to purchase those homes certainly are going on vacation. And I think we're definitely feeling feeling that. Um, we've uh, we've got a, a couple great listings in that realm that are you know getting some showings, but not not the activity that we're normally seeing. And when I look at the other homes in that price range, they're the same home. There's you know they're not flying off the shelves either. So that whole high high end right now is definitely uh, showing signs of um, you know just a lot slower than than the rest of the market. I guess that's to be expected. I mean, the lower the price, the the more buying pool. So I guess that's obvious to say, but certainly noticing that right now in, in July. Uh, so where do we go from here? Well, we definitely want to um, see if there's a new peak next week. That would be very interesting if we go over the 313 next week. It's very possible that that, that, that could be it. Uh, I think that that could happen. And really watching where what happens in August is August going to be a sleepy-ish feeling uh, um, as July, or it, you know, is it going to pick up? And uh, it, and and you know, is three thirteen going to be the peak for all of two thousand nineteen? Because as we get into August and then start moving into October, November, December, you know, October the inventory tends to go down at that time. So we're coming up to a point here where we're going to find this peak number. Is it going to be 313 or is it going to be higher? Um, you know, if we find ourselves getting into high 300s and inventory continues to grow in, uh, you know, October, November, December, well, then we'll be talking about a, a market shift for sure. So that's what, you know, that's where we're going from here is we're watching to see where, where is this next peak if we're going to hit it and then watch uh, inventory decline or not decline. So knowing these numbers uh, it definitely is going to help in, in, in seeing that. So I think that's uh, the information we got for this episode 27. And uh, I, I thank you if you want to continue to be in the know 
about what's really going on with the mid-peninsula real estate market, then simply stay tuned to the weekly Monday Morning Market Minute and then Beyond the Minute to discover if this inventory has dramatic shifts here in August and if sales are staying on pace or if there's any market events that could cause the inventory to really change and have the sales change. Thank you again for listening. And if you have any questions, continue to reach out to Tim or myself and keep going to our website, www.thegillmartins.com. Our emails are tim at thegillmartins.com and I'm dan at thegillmartins.com. Plus, when you decide to subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play Store, Stitcher, Spotify, or Pandora, you can feel comfortable that you won't miss out on any of the new data or any new episodes. Also, it would be great if you could Leave us a five-star review, which makes a big difference in spreading out the word even to more people. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you next week.